three-part series on the voice of the shepherd. And it's very exciting to hear and, and read of, of, of how God is speaking to you through the series. And I pray that God continues to speak to each one of us. Even he's speaking to me <laughs> through the series of how important it is to listen to his voice. Um, so we in week three today and um, week one, we started off with foundations, if you can remember. For those of you that might have missed it, you can always catch it on YouTube. Um, uh, Destiny Church, uh, we have our own YouTube channel, so you can catch it on there. But we started off with foundations of laying in wisdom we build on, on a firm foundation of Jesus. And we're foolish not to, because if we uh, do not build on Jesus, then we, do not, we, we won't reach the fullness of what he has for us, or we start to listen to other voices, or it doesn't create that opportunity for us to grow together, or we could be lost without the voice of the shepherd. And then we moved on to week two, which was last week, where we talked about the quiet place and about attentive listening. God calls us to be people that, are want, that listen to him attentively and how important it is about the quiet place. And I pray that that will continue to resonate in you, the quiet place, because time with the Father is where we get the overflow to go out into the world. Time with the Father is where we get to serve in church, that is where the overflow comes from. Uh, and then we sp spoke about the potter's house, how the Lord is wanting to mold us and shape us into who he wants us to be each and every day. And today we go on, uh, we looked at, looked at the why, the how, and today we're going to look at the what. But before I do that, let's just pray. Lord, we just thank you. Uh, Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to just speak about your voice. We know, Lord, that you are the good shepherd and you want the best for us. So today, Lord, I pray, even as we hear your word, I pray, Lord, that I move aside and allow you to speak to me, that your word will just come to each one of us, Lord. I pray that you will speak into situations in our life, you'll speak into circumstances, you'll speak into our spiritual maturity today, Lord. I pray that it'll be a heart to heart, from your heart to the heart of your people today. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, move and do your work. Today we pray, Lord, for receptive hearts, receptive to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. The Lord is doing a new thing, amen? Isaiah 43, verse 19 says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The Lord is speaking to the Israelites there, but I sense the Lord is speaking to us as a church that he is doing a new thing. And he wants us to know, do you perceive it? Now today I'm going to talk a lot about my patients, I work as a physiotherapist, so I'm going to be alluding to and using a lot of illustrations about patients today. I'm going to introduce you to one patient of mine called Bruce Levine. He's not a real patient, but he's in, I asked him, Bruce, can I use your name? But Bruce is like one of those patients that are like nightmare patients. You know, some patients come to us and you pray they don't make a review appointment to see you, Right. So anyway, Bruce comes in, and on his referral, it says knee pain. And we think, okay, great. He comes in, and he sits with me. Uh, he comes into my clinic room, and he sits. And I say, how are you doing, Mr. Levine? And he starts, actually, it's not just my knee. I am struggling with every part of me. My head hurts. My neck is paining. All of my spine is painful. My shoulders ache. My elbows ache. My hands ache. My hips are sore. Actually, it's not just my left knee. It's my right knee as well. And my ankles are sore. And my feet. Is there anyone like that in this room? I hope not. But anyway, you would be a nightmare patient. But, you know, and he carries on. And he carries on. And he carries on. And I have only 20 minutes with him. And he carries on. And after 15 minutes, he says, he gets up and he says, I've got to leave. And I'm like, do you not want to hear what I have to say? No, 20 minutes free parking in the NHS. I'm not waiting. And off he goes. 
And I think, well, praise the Lord, I don't get to see him again. But lo and behold, I didn't realize he makes a review appointment. And then I, a few weeks later, I see this name, Levine, Bruce Levine, on my clinic list. And I think, oh no, how on earth did he get in? And he comes in and he sits and I say, hello. And he says, I'm no better. And I'm like, uh, excuse me, I've not, you've not heard anything I have to say. I didn't get the opportunity to talk to you. You've not done anything, yet you accept expect to be better. And we can laugh about the scenario, but so often in the spiritual, we are like that. We are going into his presence. We're going in there with our list of, Lord, do this, do this, do this, do do this, do this. And then it's time to leave, but we've not listened to the voice of the Lord. And yet we expect to grow in his ways, yet we expect, Lord, where are you? Where are you? We keep saying, but we're not, we're not, we're not listening. So on the second appointment, Bruce does come in and uh, he does sit down and he listens. And I talk about, listen, Bruce, we've got to do this together. It's a two-way relationship. We've got to work together. We're going to build up your muscles. You're going to get strong. You're going to become healthy and fitter and well. And uh, we, we're going to work on this. And then he says, his immediate response is, what's the, the biggest excuse, guys? What is it? I got no time. I'm like, I look at him, you are retired. Are you serious? You've got no time. Sorry for those that are retired. I know you're very, very busy. But, um, you know, I look at him and I say that you've got no time. And this morning, the Lord is speaking to us as a church. If you are that person that's sitting there and saying, I've got no time for where God is wanting to take us this year, we have to make time for him. That's what the Lord is saying to me to tell you. We got to listen to him and it's got to be a two-way relationship. Anyone has ever been in a one-way relationship? When you say, for example, somebody new maybe comes to church or connect group and you're trying to build this relationship and you, you're phoning them, you're texting them, and it's one way, it creates frustration. And so often I believe the Lord is saying, I want to mold you, I want to shape you, I want to show you what's next, but you're not even listening to the voice of the shepherd. So today the Lord is saying, no time is not an excuse for us this year as a church. Matthew 22, verses 37 to 39 says, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with some says with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. First things first this year. Tell your neighbor, first things first. Are you talking to your neighbor? Go on, tell them first things first this year. And that is what God is calling us to. First things first today, th this year, church, because God is saying, he is our first priority. What is your first priority? And the Lord is speaking to us that he is our first priority. So I'm going to introduce you to three Ps. And the first one is planning. Benjamin Franklin says, if you don't plan in life, then it's a plan to fail. Have you ever found that in life? Anybody? Have you ever tried something? For example, you said, I'm going to get fit this year. And you know what to do, but guess what? It's the 29th of January, and you didn't start anything. Why? Maybe because you didn't plan it in. And this, this morning, the Lord says to us in Proverbs 16, verse 3, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Do you believe that the Lord is the Lord of planning? If you read the Old Testament or the New Testament, you, you hear of all these, he plans, the Lord is in the detail, and the Lord is speaking to us, he needs us to plan. Nikki Gumbel says, don't just prioritize your schedule, schedule your priority. 
And what is your first priority this year? Who is your first priority this year? That we love the Lord thy God, that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength, and we seek him first. And this morning, I want us to, uh, you know, following the series, to take the so seriously because the Lord is wanting to move us. The Lord is preparing us, is positioning us, and is commissioning us this year. The Lord is prepared us through the fast, is preparing us through the series. Even last year, we heard about the positions of worship, Pastor Jonathan. I believe he's preparing us for something powerful, and he's positioning us for something powerful and commissioning us. But the Lord says, come on, we need to be planning and preparing ourselves for this. And I want you to think of your schedule today. Every single one of you, think of your schedule. A few months ago when I shared, I talked about, I was on this course on lean management. It was a lean management training program. And this, we, were, we were all involved, all NHS workers from different departments were gathered there. And we were looking at how to save time and costs in our, each of our departments. And then one of the uh, educators told us, why don't you map out your day? I want you to start thinking, mapping out your day. When you get up to the time you sleep, mapping out your day. You know, when we were at our connect group on Monday, we had a lovely time. Everyone was open about hearing the word of God, how we're going to listen. And so many talked about social media. And social media is great. But sometimes Rachel, uh, or my daughter Rachel, she has something called screen time. Who does that on their phone? Can I see some hands? All the young ones, yeah. I don't even know. It's an app or something. But it can actually monitor your screen time. So you're aware of how long. And, and some of the guys in the Connect group were saying, we, we can get onto social media and we can be there for hours. Or we could sit on Netflix, sit on the TV, Netflix. And to be honest, I felt a bit guilty because come Christmas time with the Christmas tree there, you're sitting in front of the TV watching the soppy uh, Christmas movie. After 10 seconds, you know what's going to happen anyway, right? But you go through and you're sitting there and we could do that so easily. And I would love for us to look at that, to actually look at our time. Don't get trapped You know, the Bible talks about, let us throw off everything that hinders us and sin that so easily entangles us. I pray that this year we will be perceptive of our time, that we will be thinking always of our time and putting God first. Also, start to think about your weekly. What do you do in the week? Certain things like connect groups should be a priority for your week. Things like your prayer partner should become a priority because that is where we are putting God first. That is where we are seeking him. Church should be a priority. You know, last week we spoke about Jesus spent time with the Father, his disciplined life, spending alone time with the Father. Did you know that Jesus also went to the synagogue every week? It says in the Bible it was his custom to go into the synagogue. It was his custom. Put the Lord first this year. The Lord is telling us, he's commissioning us, he's telling us, he's preparing us. I pray you getting this. He's positioning us. And he's saying, like never before, we need to be planning. We need to prioritize him first in our lives. The next one is progression. So the Lord is wanting us to plan, but he also wants to progress us. Now, patients come with me with various conditions, and I have a lovely patient. Where's my patient? I hope he comes. I hope he's not. Oh, yes, he's there. (laughs) I'm going to introduce you to my patient. He's going to bring his chair, and he's going to sit here. Um, Yes, there's my patient. Give him a hand. Yes. So this is my patient, and a few years ago, I had a patient, and uh, NK is going to play his part now, 
And uh, this patient was involved in a motorbike accident. Motorbikers are nightmares as well, right? Because you know when they come into physio now, this motorbike accident caused a lot of problems with this patient. He came in, he fractured his spine, he fractured his femur, which is his thigh bone, he fractured his ankle, and uh, he, he might have even fractured his, his arm. And he comes to me and I say, right, for physio, what will be your goal of physio? To get back on my bike, he says. Much to my horror, but that's what motorbikers do, right? To get back on his bike. But he came to me and he couldn't really do anything. He couldn't even walk properly. And I had to think, how do we rehabilitate him to good function and good health today? So I am going to introduce you to a few things. So in order to get him to walk, in order to get NK to walk, I needed to introduce him to this walking frame. Now this frame has a lot of, is gonna offer him a lot of support. It's got a big base and it's got a lot of support and it's going to help him to walk. Let's see. Come on patient, do this right like we did. So he can't wait there, oh he's good. <laughs> this is the real deal people. Yes, you will walk. You could do this NK, keep going. Keep going NK, you've got this, you've got this. Are you getting tired? No, you're not. Keep going, keep going. Physios are slave drivers, by the way. Come on, keep going. You've got this, you've got this, you've got this, you've got this. So I give him the support and he's got that stable base and this patient is like awesome, right? And uh, you can take a seat for demo purposes. <laughs> right, so yes, so now I go away and I leave him or oh, he's left the clinic, so I'm gone. Now, the expectation for the physio is that he will practice. I do not have to be with him. Yes, NK, you will get up, and I've left the room, but he will continue to practice. Every day, he will practice. You see, in the spiritual, why we are not progressing why we are not getting to where God is wanting us to be is because we think we are um, Sunday Christians. Okay, you can sit down, NK. Thank you. <laughs> Take a break. The physio will be back soon. But we think we are Sunday Christians. Can I tell you something? <laughs> we cannot do anything much if we are just Sunday Christians, where it's Sunday morning, you get up, I'm going to go to prayer, take my Bible, dust off the Bible. I've done this. We've all done this. Nobody's perfect here, but what can I encourage you? The Lord is wanting to progress us, and he's saying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I need you to put into practice praying, reading your Bible, spending time with me. Why? So that I can mold you and shape you into who I want you to be so that you can be positioned and commissioned to do what he's called us to. You see, when we start to do that, things start to change. So NK, on his next visit, comes to me. And NK is a brilliant patient because he comes and when I check him out, check, not check him out, but check how he's walking, he stands up and he's like, oh, he can put a bit of weight now because he's been practicing. So I can get him onto, into an elbow crutch now. And guess what? He can put a bit of weight on that foot. He's progressing and he's a great I've got the tallest person in the house to be the dear. <laughs> but fortunately, I could have adjusted this. Uh, well done, well done, NK. So he's putting some weight into that. He is progressing. Why? Because he's practiced. He's not waited for me to come on once a week or once every two weeks. He's been practicing. And yet again, he keeps practicing. And then what can we do? 
We can even progress him now because he's so good and he's practicing to a walking stick. <laughs> and he's like the best ever. And he's progressing so well that now he can walk independently. It's a miracle. Thank you, NK. Thank you. Leave the chair, yeah? Leave the chair. Perfect. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to progress this year. He wants us to stop being Sunday Christians. God sees everything. You could fool me and I could fool you. But God sees us. And he wants us. Why am I preaching this? Why am I sharing this with you? Because God wants his best for us. He wants us to progress. He is wanting us to, he's wanting to extend us. He's wanting us to stand firm on his word. You know, Paul talks to the Corinthian church. And when Paul talks to the Corinthian church, he seems a bit upset with them because he says in 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 2, he talks to the church and its leaders and he says, brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. But destiny, we want to be ready for what God has for us. We don't want to be drinking milk all the days of our lives. We want to move into maturity. We want to progress. We want to be the best that we could be for God. Amen? Yeah? We want to be the best that we could be for Him. But it needs for us to adopt those spiritual habits. It needs for us to start believing for the best that we could be. And this morning, Pastor Faith brought up the scripture, Acts 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And what will happen when you receive power? You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and all the ends of the earth. You see, God is not wanting us just to get spiritually better, bigger, but he's commissioning us to go out into the world and be his witnesses. That is our win. That is why we do what we do, so we can be his witnesses in your Jerusalem, in your Judea, in your Samaria, and to all the ends of the world. And, and this morning, the Lord is saying, there is so many people all around us that need you to speak to them. And you might be thinking, I've got nothing to share. Believe me, you've got something to share. You share about the goodness of God. You share your powerful testimony. You share what God is doing in your life. You be you, but share who you are because you are a child of the most high God. That is being a witness. Stop thinking that you need to know all of the Bible. Nobody knows all of the Bible, but the Lord is saying, I need you to be my witnesses. Just share love. Just share how God has brought you peace. Just share your testimony. And, and I always feel as I look around the room that the Lord has done so much for each one of us. We serve a good God. Each of you have a powerful testimony about how good God is. And this morning, this is our opportunity. Now is our opportunity. Now is the time to share it, to be witnesses. Can I just bring this as a word of, of, of caution? Because we can get caught up. Psalm 1 verse 1 says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of mockers. I'm going to bring this chair across again. You see, when you read Psalm 1, it's talking about the blessed person. And the, and, and the Bible is saying there, do not be that person that is walking in the midst, is walking with, in, the, in the way of the wicked, no standing in the way of sinners, no sitting 
in the seat of mockers. It's what it's trying to say, and what I can see is that you're actually becoming complacent with things of the world. You're walking amongst the wicked, you're standing in the way of sinners, and then you're starting to sit in the seat of mockers. Do not be comfortable with the things of this world. The Lord is calling us to be people that are set apart for Him because He's wanting to do powerful things amongst us. So can I just encourage you? Do not be people that are becoming comfortable with things of the world. But it says in Psalm 1, verses 2 to 3, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord who meditates on it, Day and night, that person is like a tree planted by the streams of water which heals its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither and whatever they do prospers. You see, the Lord is calling us to a level or to a time of fruitfulness. We can see it all around us. We've got new faces. We've got new people that are coming all the time. The Lord is calling us to fruitfulness. So we've got planning We've got progression, and now we come to perseverance. The Lord is wanting us to persevere. Pete, uh, Robert Collier says, success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. Do you agree with that? Every, or just one person agrees, thank you. But for example, if you're thinking, I want to get fit, I want to be better with eating, I want to, it is small steps Every day of your life that makes you successful at whatever you do. It's small spiritual steps of discipline, of giving your best to God. Like we said uh, last week, whether it's getting up a bit earlier or, or taking your lunch and whatever it is, giving your best to God. But it's those small steps that you will choose to do that will give you success even in the spiritual Philippians 1 verse 6 says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it unto completion until the day. God has got great things for us in store. And you might be thinking, you know, the worst thing a patient can do is if they compare one patient to another. You see, the Lord is not looking for perfection, you'll be happy to know, because none of us are perfect. And you know, the worst thing you can do is compare yourself to anyone else in the spiritual walk. Just like patients, two people have had a knee replacement and one starts to compare themselves, you don't do that because each of you are different. But what is it that God looks for? What is it that God looks for? And in Matthew 25, 23, he says, it says, his master replies, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful for a few things, and I will put you in charge of many. Come and share in your master's happiness. You see, ultimately, what God looks for in you and I is goodness and faithfulness. Amen? That's what he's looking for, that we are good in all our ways, like Jesus was while he was on this earth, and that we remain faithful to him, faithful in the little things. Remember, God sees the little things. He's seeing those little sacrifices you are making each and every day. He sees your heart. He sees what you're doing. Remain faithful. Remain faithful to him. James 1 verses 2 to 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You see, we are going to go through storms, whether we like it or not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask my patient to come back on. Give him a hand. It's a miracle. He's walking. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right. Now, if you come to 
a physio clinic, we've got all these devices to increase your pain. No, I'm kidding. But you come to a physio clinic, this is called a reflex hammer. So we have to check reflexes of our patients. We've got to, say for example, if they come with any nerve problems on their legs or the arms, we've got to check their reflexes. And so there's many reflexes. I hope you can see our, our model. And uh, sit back, calm down. I'm not going to hurt you. <laughs> right, but we're going to check his knee reflex. Okay, this is called the knee jerk. And this is the longest patient's leg. I need to find his knee. Wait, hang on, hang on. It will, it will work. No. Nope. <laughs> Bruce, I'm listening to you. Just, there you go. He's got a bit of bony legs here. Emu, come on, Emu. Feed this guy. <laughs> right. So, so, the reflex, knee reflex. It's an automatic reflex. You know, we started off the series and we spoke about storms. So whether you're, whether you're wise or whether you're foolish, wherever you are, whether you're young or whether you're old, we're going to have trials, we're going to have storms, we're going to have difficulties. But this morning, what is going to be your reflex? What is going to be your response in the storm? I pray that it's going to be the Word of God. I pray that we are going to be those people that get the Word of God in our minds, get it into our hearts, and then speak it. Because you see, we have to start with it going into our minds. And then we've got to seal the word in our heart. The Bible says, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I will not sin against you. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when you're going through hard times, when you're going through that anxiety and, and stress in your life, the word, Philippians 4 verse 6 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, let your requests be known to the Lord with thanksgiving. You know what? What if whenever you are feeling worried or sad, your reflex became the word of God, that you will not be anxious, but you'll rather pray. So turning our worry into worship, turning our panic into prayer, that's where God's calling us to be. Those people People that our automatic response will not be going into a cocoon and, and going into a state of despair, but looking to his word, speaking his word. But we've got to get his word in our hearts and our minds this year like never before. If you're going through a hard time, you know, if you've got a, a bad diagnosis, and Psalm 23 verse 4 says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. What if you had that verse and that became your response? What if? What if? You can go now. It's over. It's over. You've survived. You've survived. Yeah, you can. But that should be our automatic response. And that's what God is saying. In order to persevere this year, I need you to tap in to the Word of God. I want you to be that person, those people, that church that has the Word hidden in your heart. To have that Word that's hidden in your heart and spoken when things come your way. That's when we will be victorious in this life. I want all of us to take out our communication cards right now. Let's take our communication cards out, all of you, even you young people. God is speaking to each one of us. Thank you, Jean-Jacques. Yes, he's got it and he's waving it. And you've got a pen. Let's all put something down. You know, this is not just writing. This is declaring something. And this goes to a prayer team, and we're praying for you. So what is your next step? What is it that God has spoken to you? Is it maybe planning, looking at your life and starting to think, what can I do differently in my planning this year? Do I need to lessen my time on, on my screen or do I need to lessen my time on other things where I'm just sitting and doing nothing? How can I get God to be number one in my life this year? 
Maybe some of you are stuck. Maybe you are stuck and you are, you know, you still um, have, you still on this walking frame when really you should be standing tall. And the Lord is saying you're stuck there because you're wanting all that support all the time when really you should be practicing. You should be putting something into practice so you can get better. Can I encourage you? Maybe your next step is just making church a priority this year. Coming with your family to the church of God, doing your best to do that. That could be your next step. What if it's the word, learning the word? And for some of you, you might be thinking, you know what, I can't learn the word. You can. We can. You know, for me, when I have to learn a scripture, and, I, and that's my point to put down, I need to learn more scriptures each and every week. I put it, I write it down. I'm not like my husband and my daughter, Rachel. They just look at something once and they know it. I have to look at this verse every day, maybe three or four times a day, learn it, get it into my heart, and start speaking it. And that's maybe where God is telling you, I need to do that. I need to do that with the word today. And that is when we're going to learn the word of God and hear his voice more clearly. I pray that you've all put down a next step for the series. What is your next step? How has God been speaking to, to you? I'm just going to finish off. Sorry, I know I've taken my time. But there's a prophetic word that is given in Ezekiel. <coughs> Excuse me. 47 verses 1 to 2. And basically what's happening here is Ezekiel is taken with an angel and there's water that is coming from the stage and is coming from the different sides of the altar and from the temple. And when Ezekiel walks with this man, he starts to measure and it's measuring from ankle deep to knee deep to waist deep and then it's overflowing. And then I'm just going to quickly read Ezekiel 40, uh, 47, verses 6. He said to me, Son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back, uh, led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Araba, where it enters the Dead Sea. When it enters the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be a, a large number of fish. Um, uh, and because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore from the En Gedi to the En Glaim, and there will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be uh, of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. But the swamps and the marshes will not become fresh, for they will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and leaves for healing. What started off as a trickle has now become overflowing. And the Lord is saying, what you're going to start today is going to become overflowing. Because that's what the Lord does. But he sees our hearts. He sees our desire. And he says, church, I don't want you to stop at just a trickle. I don't want you to stop at just ankle deep. I don't want you to stop at waist deep. I want it to be overflowing. You know why? When we are overflowing, when we go out, we carry the living water with us. And that's what God is saying. I want you to carry that living water with you. So where you go, there'll be fruitfulness. Where they go, you'll be fishers of men. You will be my witnesses because you are carrying me with you. And that is what the Lord is commissioning us this year. P Destiny Church, this is what the Lord is saying to us. He's preparing us. He's positioning us. And he is commissioning us to do what he's called us to do. If only we would listen 
to the voice of the shepherd. 